Hey, what up fish friends? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a CO2 generator so you can produce it at home for your planted aquarium. I use CO2 in some of my planted tanks and I have for a number of years. I've never really been into generating it myself because it's been pretty affordable. So why am I all of a sudden interested in generating CO2? Well, I'll tell you why. Because of inflation. All right. I'm joking around a bit, but seriously, last time I went to the store to get CO2, it was twice as expensive. Blew my mind. And so I'm gonna start making my own CO2. It's really not that hard. So there's a few different ways you can do it. In today's video, I'm gonna show you using yeast and sugar. So it's a really simple process. All you do is combine yeast and sugar water together. Yeast consumes the sugar. Uh, which is part of the fermentation process. If you've ever brewed or something, you might be familiar. And then uh, it produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So we're gonna be harnessing the biological processes of yeast to create cheap CO2. So all you need for that are some household items. You can save some plastic bottles. You'll need two of them. And then yeast and sugar and water. Most people have those lying around at home. And then you can either buy one of these kits for about $15. I'll put a link in the description. Or you can build your own. It's basically just airline and uh, silicone to seal up around the caps. And the reason that I bought this is because I have messed around with generating my own in the past. And I always had a hard time getting the seal to push airline through this lid. Um, it's not hard for a week or two, but for some reason, the pressure always causes the silicone seal to leak. And then I lose my pressure. So um, pretty affordable. I decided 15 bucks was worth, the ha or worth not dealing with the hassle of having to constantly repair it. Let's take a look at what's inside this. All right, let's take a look at what's inside this handy dandy little kit here. It's a DIY CO2 generator. Instructions, oh, I guess you won't need that since I'm walking you through everything, so. Um, comes with some airline. And then some lids. Now this is what I was talking about. We were gonna screw these right into the PET bottles and what I always had a hard time with was getting these seals to hold when I uh, would drill holes in the lids and then wrap some silicone around it. That's the part I was talking about. And so what's really cool is when I did that, I never had a little pressure gauge. So this one comes with the pressure gauge. It comes with a little valve so you can adjust the amount of CO2 going into the tank. And then looks like we got some backup supplies here. Oh backup valve. Hey, okay, welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to be setting up the CO2 here and letting it build up a little pressure um, before I hook it up to the tank. So looking at this thing here, um, it's actually designed to be used with citric acid and baking soda, which I'll go over in a little bit. It's just another way to do it. But since I'm just going to be using yeast and sugar water, uh, I'll take a slightly different approach. I'm gonna modify this a tad. Um, basically, this little Y split here, uh, I'm not really sure why that's there, but I'm gonna take it out and replace it with some regular airline. So the first thing we're gonna need is a cup of sugar. All right, one cup, doesn't have to be exact. Go ahead and use the funnel. Um, if you don't have one, you can just roll up some paper and stick it in the top. And then I'm gonna put in half a teaspoon of yeast. And then I'm gonna fill this up about three quarters of the way with some lukewarm water. Give it a really good shake around, make sure that sugar is mixed in. The yeast is mixed up. Oh, vigorously shake it. I 
And then this little ball down here also has to do with the citric acid method. So I'm just gonna pull that off. Don't really need it. And then I'm gonna pull this whole tube off because what happens is this liquid solution produces gas, which fills this chamber. So it doesn't need, we don't need anything to be absorbed from down here. Then we're just gonna get liquid being pushed into the other one. That's not what we want, we want the gas. So get this hooked up. Cool. And if you squeeze it, you should be able to feel air coming out this end. And obviously, since we just filled it up, there's no pressure in there. That gauge should be reading at zero. All right, I've gone ahead and filled this up most of the way with water. The idea behind this one is that this tube will rest in there. Any CO2 that gets pumped from this chamber into here will uh, potentially have some impurities, some yeast residue or some gross stuff that we don't want going into our lovely planted tanks. So this chamber will absorb any of those impurities, filter it out through the water. Once it comes bubbling up through here, it will come out this hole. And so right now I'm gonna close off this, um, yeah, I'm gonna close off this valve. That way we can allow the pressure to build up for a little bit. And once I see the pressure has started to build up, I'll know that the yeast has started to consume the sugar producing CO2 and it's about ready to hook up to the tank. So let's give that a little bit of time to sit and we'll come back and visit either later today or tomorrow morning. Okay, it's a couple days later and we do have pressure now. There's barely any, but you can see it's at least reading almost a quarter, whatever it's kilogram per centimeter squared. Um, you can see the yeast is fizzing up, it's doing its work. And when you feel the bottle, you can feel it's tight. That means there's a lot of pressure built up inside. It's a very simple setup here. All I have is this hose coming from the system or this airline coming from the system into this little bubble counter. And then from the bubble counter, it's running straight into the tank. All right, so the CO2 is up and running now and I figured out what the problem was. The problem was that I hadn't had added enough sugar or yeast. So in total, there is now two cups of sugar and a full tablespoon of yeast. And the other issue why it took an extra couple days is because the yeast was expired and I hadn't been storing it in my fridge. Uh, regardless, it still ended up doing its job. <clears throat> it just took a little longer. So something to be careful of is when you start pumping CO2 in the tank, you're not sure how fast it's gonna come out. So right now I have it situated at the top now that I think it's reached its maximum capacity, I'm gonna lower it into the tank. Now what happens is when I bring the CO2 down into the tank, it's gonna have longer to fizz up. Right now it's at the very top, those bubbles go right to the surface and they barely do anything to the tank. When I lower it, it's gonna have an opportunity for the flow or the current in the tank, the outflow, to pick the CO2 up and distribute it around the tank that's gonna allow for the CO2 to actually dissolve in the tank and raise the levels, giving the plants the benefits that we're looking for. So the only reason I did that is because I wasn't sure how strong the CO2 would pump and I didn't wanna displace oxygen in the water and suffocate my fish. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. Really easy, all I'm gonna do is bring this diffuser down to the bottom and let it slowly fizz up. A couple other things that are important for a CO2 tank is to have some sort of a way to measure how much CO2 is in there. So I'm gonna do that by using this drop checker with some indicator solution. Uh, the way this works is you just fill up a drop checker. I actually prefer the glass kinds, but I didn't have any on hand and the whole idea of doing this is that it's kind of cheap. Yeah. 
Not put too much in there. You fill up your drop checker with some solution. It's now dark blue. And then there's a scale on the drop checker bottle. You can see when it goes all the way to yellow, that's too much. I'm just using trace amounts, so we should get a green color, not even a lime green, which is what a lot of people shoot for. So just stick that in here. And then after a couple hours, we should see a reflection in that value. It should turn from blue to dark green. And so then the last thing to consider is whether or not you wanna get an inline solenoid. This is essentially a timer for your CO2. When this is plugged in, it's in open mode, so CO2 can flow through this airline here. When it's off, the valve shuts, so CO2 won't flow through there. So if your regulator, gosh darn it, I gotta figure this out. If your regulator is pumping out a lot of CO2, then it's worth putting one of these on. Since I'm only getting trace amounts in my tank, it's barely gonna affect the levels and the fish could live with this 24 seven. When you have really high levels, it's important that you turn it off at night. So during the day when the light's on and your plants are photosynthesizing, the CO2 helps them put a lot of oxygen back into the water. But at night, when the lights are off and your plants aren't putting oxygen in the water, high levels of CO2 will suffocate your fish. Another option if you are getting really high levels of CO2 and you don't have a solenoid and you don't wanna buy one, is just to move your CO2 diffuser. So pull it up closer to the surface and then less of the bubbles have an opportunity to get distributed around your tank and dissolve, um, and dissolve into the water. Yeah. That's all I got for DIY CO2 today. Thanks a lot for watching. Consider hitting that like and sub button if you enjoyed today's video. Leave a comment if you got a question or if you wanna say hi. Until next time, see ya.